welcome back in this video we will talk about http extended logging i would recommend you to watch my previous video on web logic log configuration and http common logging i have put those links in the description and i button so do check out those videos if you are new to my channel don't forget to subscribe my channel for more interesting videos related to web logic administration or soa development without wasting time let's see these things in action so we will log into our weblogic console and go to server now we can go to login and there we will go and in this tab we will see advanced option we'll click that one and here we will get an option to change the format of http logging so in the last video we have changed this value from extended to common now in this video we will change our format from common to extended for that we will have to take a lock after taking the lock we will change this format from common to extended once this is set to extended this format fields will come into the picture we can change the sequence or we can add or remove fields uh, from here and this is the benefit of using extended logging over common logging uh, we will see the significance of these fields uh, in the document before that let's save this and activate the changes and for this change we'll have to restart our servers so let's restart while our servers are restarting let us go to the documentation so this is the document for the extended logging and here you can see we have fields that is date time cs method cs uri and n number of fields are there which we can use so whatever is not useful for your access log you can remove from the extended logging tab for example date means the date when the transaction got completed also note that there are different meanings for the prefixes uh, for example c means client s means server and when you see both of them like s and c it means from server to client if it is cs then it means client to server so for that you can also refer one more document that is extended log format document and here they have mentioned detailed information regarding this naming conventions you can see here so these are the fields which come by default with the web logic extended logging format uh, you can add or remove these fields uh, as per your requirement so as we discussed cs means client to server ctx means client transaction and if you see sc it means server to client so let us see these logs by generating some traffic by our script which we have created as per our previous video so this is our script which is going to generate some traffic on our service uh, let's see this script once so in this script we are simply using curl command to invoke this service which is say hello service so let's run this script using watch command so minus n we will run this every three seconds and uh, we want to invoke our service every three seconds so we are giving this option and you can see it is invoking our service every three seconds Now let us go to access logs and see if we have any entries there in the access log. So this is our server logs path and inside that we should be seeing access log. Let's tail this log 
and you can see we are getting some information regarding our invocation here so our first column is date column second is time this is method and this sequence is as per our configuration in the web logic http login now let us try to add some fields and see if that is getting propagated here so we'll go to our documentation and pick some fields and try to add it to our logging format so from so from here we will be choosing cdns and sdns and we'll add this to in our logging format and again to change anything in the logging format fields we'll have to take the log now here we can simply add cdns and sdns in the last We'll save this and activate the change. Now we will restart this servers. Although it is saying no restarts are required, but uh, uh, we won't be able to see these fields until and unless we restart our server. So let's do that. So our server has been restarted. Let's go to access logs and see if we are seeing those fields or not. And now you can see two extra fields are there. And in the both field, we are seeing localhost because we are generating traffic from the localhost and the service is deployed in the localhost. So both fields are uh, there as a local host that's it for this video i have shared this document links in the description in the next part of this video we will see how we can create custom fields and we will try to trace username password in the access logs so stay tuned for that video if you found this video helpful please like this video subscribe my channel and hit the bell icon for the further notification and don't forget to put a comment so that i can keep coming with the different different topics for you thank you